Okay, we might get started if everybody is ready. So as you've been coming in, I've just been muting um, if I can just to deal with some of the background noise issues. But if you could just check and make sure that uh, your microphone is muted just for the moment by clicking the little microphone icon next to your name. You are more than welcome to unmute yourself and ask a question at any time, but just so that we can keep things um, a little bit easier to listen to. And also, if you do have your video function running, could you please turn that off just so that we can maximize the bandwidth for the call? All right. And actually, if someone could unmute themselves and just let me know that you can hear me and also that you can see my screen with the Optera dashboard on it. Hearing you well, and we can see the screen, Mel. Excellent. Thank you, Tom. I'm saying no. Who was that? Sorry. Okay. All right. Well, let's get started. So just to introduce myself, my name is Melanie. I work on the help desk here at Backpatic. So if you've ever called in to us, I've probably spoken to you before. Um, I live here and have been here for about two years. Um, I'm based in Dalesford in Victoria, so a bit further south than most of the company. Uh, I am going to later on be running a bit of a demonstration of the crop planning and scenario functions uh, within Optera and also a little bit in Advisor, but I'll just hand over to Chris Cheese, our CEO first, for a little bit of an introduction. Chris, are you there? Hello, Chris. Hi. Hi. Is there now? Yes, I can hear you. Fire away. Excellent. Excellent. Good morning, everybody. Um, so I'm actually dialing in from a mobile phone at the very bottom end of Tasmania. So it'll be really, really interesting to see how the mobile comms goes. But I just wanted to do a um, a very quick intro. Really, I guess just has joined the meeting. Really, I guess just to give you a bit of context, sort of in the in the bigger picture. So today we did a, a quick. Uh, intro to the Optera um, app last week, but really a lot of the, the questions that are coming back in are really about people are now either started 2020 planning or, or very much thinking about it. And the question was, well, you know, what do I do in the, in, in, at least in the first part of the season? So I've just got a few notes I made, just literally for a, um, three or four minutes to give you a bit of a context of that. So I think the the main thing is this idea of just begin with the end in mind. And all I mean by that is, for most of you, when you're doing crop planning, the, 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 the end in mind is to create a crop plan to give to a farmer that really has defined the rotation review, um, obviously updated the product um, you were using right up the front. in terms of inputs and um, um, operations and so on. Um, I haven't tied it. Yeah. Well, you might just mute um, there if you would, please. It's yeah, excellent. Thank you. So, in the end of mind. So, in other words, the first part of um, that planning piece is to get to, to come out of that with a farm plan, as many of you have done for many, many years. So, what we're actually, what Mel's going to step you through, is we're suggesting that for the first part of planning for 2020 actually start in Paddock Advisor where, again, you will already be familiar. A lot of you, most of you, all of you will all have existing farm plans set up. Um, so it'll be the easiest way initially, literally just to populate some content across into Optera. So there is a crop planning app built into the broader Optera thing. Mel's actually going to take you in and, and, and show you that. So really this discussion today is probably more about how quickly and easily we can get the content in Optera in the first instance, rather than necessarily uh, entering it from there. So Paddock Advisor is integrated to Optera by way of the sync process. So Brett's just finished today 
the the new version of Paddock Advisor, which is version 11, and one of the main changes for it is that it includes livestock planning. So the ability to be able to create mobs on farm and then apply animal health and veterinary products, uh, animal supplement products and operations such that we can do an integrated plan for mixed farming enterprises, so integrate the models of the livestock with cropping and pasture planning that we've traditionally done, but also really to set up the season in the context of having a bunch of planned activities that might be backline drenched those mobs on a particular date through the season or a planned date. So the second part of this, I guess, is begin with the end in mind, is just that notion around if you're not actually providing a formal planning service to growers by way of a farm plan pre-season. The other real reason, and I think you'll find as we step you through this quick update and others to come, the real reason to do a bit of pre-season planning is just to set the Optera and the mobile devices up with all of the activities that you might want to do, all of your um, favourite recipes and brews, Maybe that's um, favourite livestock um, um, treatments as well. If you if you're providing advice on that side, so that's really the gist of it. So set up the farm plan, set up the season is is really the context of what Mel's going to step you through. Um, from a crop and pasture plan perspective, the base we spoke about is just using the program that you're familiar with to get started. So the real context I think that we're, we're, we're suggesting for 2020 is pre-season, any planning you do, do that in Paddock Advisor, populate that information over to Optera. Later in the planning season, as we head towards um, the planning windows opening, then that, the, the tweaking, the changing of um, paddocks from one crop type to another through discussion with the farm and so on, that late sort of pre-season tweaking will definitely be easier and fast over in Optera. Um, so things like the copy and paste function, the search and replace uh, scenarios in the, in, the, in the traditional pack advisor that make it very quick to sort of um, update farm plans and then copy a whole bunch of planning across farms and paddocks are still there and that's why we're suggesting that. One of the things we want you to have a good look at um, is, is scenarios. We've taken scenarios to a different level in Optera by means of just being able to select a paddock for a year in a rotation screen and instead of just being able to change a crop type and variety, you can actually uh, select a scenario from the scenario library, drop that into that paddock and it will bring the whole cropping or livestock program through. So as um, scenarios are to um, crops in a paddock, then scenarios are to treatments for a mob. Um, and that'll make it a lot faster um, across the season in 2020 to be able to share that information as well. So Mel's going to step you, give you a quick look at scenarios. Scenarios a lot of you are well familiar with. They've existed in Paddock Advisor for a long, long time. We've just taken them to a different level in Optera. And just based on the livestock plan, um, I think the core thing many of you will be wanting to just get, obviously, the crop and pasture planning out of the way before Christmas. We'll certainly, when we regroup in the new year, come back and run some stuff around, specifically around livestock planning. I just want to make a quick comment there. After travelling from Brisbane through to Tasmania in the last 10 days, um, so much of the discussion turned fairly quickly around in the mixed farming areas, the, certainly the wheat sheep belt, around this notion of the banks having much um, uh, ever-increasing, more stringent requirements around the planning piece and even looking to the advisors often to act as a, as a referee as far as the that operation is concerned. So this notion of a fully integrated farm plan makes a lot of sense. It's just there's some there's some training and so on to get you up to speed on it. Um, lastly, I think the, the one of the key things about Optera is we've designed it to be driven by templates. What we mean by that is, is if you create a template, say by crop type variety, district and target yield, to create a basic template for that with all the inputs and operations and everything in there, and then we make it easy for you to be able to share that from grower to grower, paddock to paddock, farm to farm, then that automates a lot of the process and makes things very fast and easy. But of course at the beginning there's a bit we need to teach you how to just create these template libraries. And scenarios are a really good example of that, and that's all we're going to focus on today is just what's the basis of the scenario. It actually creates a template that you can then repurpose um, over and over and over. In the new version of SoilMate, uh, we call FertRec, 
then Pertrec is basically driven by four templates, one for a PO to send something to a lab. And once you create the half dozen templates you need or all your sisters set them up, then it becomes really, really fast after that. But the point being is there's just a bit of work to um, to do to set them up in this way. Hopefully, if Mel's sort of using that as a bit of a theme when she steps you through, um, again, these are pretty short and sharp sessions. Um, so we're not trying to cover too much ground. And on that note, I'll hand over to Mel. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Chris. So on that note, I'm just going to switch uh, my sharing over to advisor for now. No, you might mute me out too if you would please. Oh, I'm not sure. giving you feedback. Yes. Uh, um, I actually don't have that option, Chris. I think because you've dialed in, so you might need to just mute your audio on your phone. But it's not too bad at the okay, moment. Okay, sure do. Yeah. No problem. All Mute right. It. So we're just going to start over here in Advisor, and um, I'm going to just start off by covering some of the scenario functions that you already have available to you in your current program, um, just as a bit of a refresher. Um, and then we're going to move on to what's changed in terms of scenarios and how we're going to be using them in Optera. Um, but I guess the first important point is that all of the, uh, the additional scenario functions will be available to you with the release of the next advisor update, which will be the latest on Friday, but very likely today. So if you're logging in at the moment and you can't see some of this function, don't panic. It's coming very shortly. <laughs> but just to begin, so um, I'm just going to go over loading a scenario um, into the scenario manager. So the idea would be that you're using the scenarios as templates. So if you've created, for example, um, this plan for this paddock that you would want to apply to a number of different paddocks and, and farms and even across various client files, uh, you can see that I've added here some um, fertilizers, sprays, some operations, everything's available there. And I want to copy that so that I can apply it as many places as possible. I just use this function up here, load selected zone to scenario. Then I just enter a scenario, scenario name, so I'll call this one early 2020 plan. And that's all I need to do. With the update of uh, Advisor that is uh, imminent, you will then be able to jump in here to manage your scenarios. So I'm just going to click on this little arrow in the top toolbar to the right of Cropping Scenario Manager. It's going to take me into the scenario manager screen. So this is my cropping scenario up the top here. And if I want to open it um, so that I can see what's going on, I just go to file and then open or edit scenario file. And then I double click the scenario. That's going to open up all of my scenarios here. So I can go in and edit them if I want to. I can make any changes that I want and those changes will be automatically saved. Um, as you can see, this scenario that I've just added has populated here, so that one's available now in my scenario manager to drop in wherever I like. Once I've made any of the changes that I need to in my scenario files here, I would go back into the scenario manager tool. Um, I'm just going to delete my existing scenario file now because I need to have a blank one for the beginning, but you'll be doing this for the first time. So all you'll need to do is click your scenario file, which will already, um, it will already exist within this list because when you uh, have Advisor installed, it automatically comes with a scenario file for you. So you just need to click it. You need to reset the sync clock up here. Yes, on the prompt. And then you need to sync this file. So similar process to the first time that you're syncing a client file from Advisor just in a slightly different place. So that's going to sync through. And it's just going to take about 30 seconds or so to process before it's available in Optera. So I'm going to close out of this. And then I'm just going to jump to share my Optera screen again. All right, so back over here, um, if you've had a, a bit of a look at the platform already, this is the dashboard where you end up. Um, the 
the farm that I'm working in at the moment is this one up here, but I could change that to a different one if I needed to. Uh, where I'm going to go to have a look at these scenarios that I've just synced is crops and pastures here, and then into Scenario Manager. I should then have all scenarios selected here, and in just a second, once it processes, I should have this scenario file available to select from this dropdown. Here we go. And here I have all of those scenarios that you could see in Advisor to select from. So if I select this barley one that I've just created, I can view the details in here so I know what's going on. I can also share this scenario with another user. And to do that, I click on this Share Selected Scenario button over here. And all I need to do is, if I've got a corner post set up with uh, other people within my organization, I'll just be able to select them from here. But I can share this with literally anybody uh, who has access to Optera by just typing in their email address over here. And then OK. And then I should get a success message down here. And so uh, that user will then receive an email with an activation link. And once they've activated that link, they will have that scenario available to them to use within Optera as well. At the moment, uh, the scenario manager is that's the extent of what you would do in here. You can also print or export your scenarios if you wanted just a static copy of what's included in them. But where these become useful and what we actually want to do with them is uh, to jump into rotations up here. So I'm just going to select a farm that's associated with this client file that I'm in. Um, and then once I've got all of my scenarios loaded in that I would want to use, I can literally just drop them into my rotation over here. So I can select this one from here, click yes, and then it's going to apply that whole scenario to that paddock. As soon as I've applied that scenario to this paddock, um, if I opened that file back up in Advisor, all of that information would also be available there. So um, Advisor will force you to sync the client file when you open it. Um, there's no sync process that needs to happen on here. That's an automatic process. So that's now available for me as a rotation, both in Optera and in the Advisor program as well. So we could complete the whole rotation once we've got those templates set up in you know, four or five minutes for this farm. If, on the other hand, you were looking to do some more traditional crop planning, um, paddock by paddock, uh, and you've got more specific information that you wanted to include, we can also do that within the Optera platform in a very similar way to uh, the way that you do crop planning in Advisor. So I would go up here to Crops and Pastures, and then Crop Planning. I'm going to select 2020 up here. My farm is here. Um, I already have the farm that I want to use existing, but if I wanted to add another farm or another trading name from in here, I would just go down here to add new and then type in the name. So I'll demonstrate that process just by adding a new paddock. So if I've got a farm and I've got, uh, uh, sorry, a client file and a farm already selected, I might just add a new paddock here. Um, I'll call this one paddock 12 for now and I'll save. And that's a new paddock ready for me to enter a plan into. So the first thing that I need to do, similar to Advisor, is just go up here to add. So I need to add a new management zone. I select my crops. All of this information is uh, coming from your master database. And so as long as you've got that synced up, you'll have everything you need in here. So canola, select a variety, very similar process. So, um, Let's put some prices in here. Uh, the area should be loaded if you've already selected a paddock and that's got the area synced from Advisor, but because this is a new paddock, I'm going to need to enter it in here. I'll just put some numbers in here. Anything with a red asterisk up against it uh, means that that is a compulsory item that you need to complete in order to save the new management zone. So area, seed rate, and seed date are the things that I need. Uh, if I was planning in 2020, I might be sewing in about April. Um, that's all the information that I need for the zones. So now I can just save from here and my new zone is available here. I can go back in and edit that here if I needed to. Um, but once it's created, I would just select it from here. And then you'll see you've got very similar options to the tabs that you would see in Advisor down here for adding the rest of your plan. 
So the blend under soil seed dressing, irrigation and crop nutrition are all very similar in terms of how we add that information in. So they've all just got these add buttons up here. I would then add in a fertilizer. So just click here and then you can either type or uh, you can select from the drop down. Um, that information is default, so it's come from my master database. It's already in there. Timing, I might say, let's go pre sowing. Um, I do need to add a date, as you can see from the asterisk here as well. So let's say we're putting that in, in somewhere in March. Uh, all the rest of it I can leave blank for now, so I'm just going to save that one. And there is my fertilizer, so I can repeat that process as many times as I need for the sowing fertilizers. Um, if I wanted to go and start adding in some chemical mixes for later in the season, crop protection is where I do that. And it's just a, it's just a two-step process, very similar, but I'll just take you through that because there's an extra step of adding the mix and then the chemicals. So I'm going to click Add up here. It's automatically going to populate that this is mix one. It's already got my hectares because I added them in with the seed. Um, I'm going to put a water rate in here, uh, target species, anything from here, timing, uh, I'll just select something random from here, date, also compulsory, so say around June, and then I'll just add a footnote if I wanted to, um, and then save. So this is the mix now, so it's saved this protection mix. Um, that's my mixed details, but I need to add some chemicals to it. So I'll jump across here to chemicals. I'll add a chemical. And uh, just enter all the required units in here. And then again, just saving. And then I've got the chemical available. So I can add as many chemicals to this mix as I need to. If you go back to details, you'll see that we're still in the same mix. And once I'm done with that, um, I can just go back to the crop protection table and then see the whole list of mixes there. So I could add a further mix on from there. Now, just yes. on those hectares, uh, often we have different feeding hectares to spraying hectares. Um, can we have two different hectares? In the same take. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you could edit if I go in here, I can edit these hectares for the spray if I wanted to spray a different amount. Is that your question? Yeah, that's my question. Yep. Yeah. Great, yeah, so that's adjusted the hectares for spraying there. So all of those fields are editable. Anything that automatically populates you can change. Um but if you've set up your master database it does make it a bit easier just to have the default things loading in there. Um, so that's basically the process. You would go through and add you know, operations and production and anything else that you needed to, similar as in Advisor. Um, next time you think your client file in Advisor, that information will be available to you um, in there. So you could go through and load the report in Advisor. Um, there is also a farm report uh, that is in Opterra and will be available in the new year, which is a similar report, just in a bit of a nicer format and um, a little bit easier to edit. So then you'll be able to complete your whole plan within Opterra and then send it out from here. Um, but it's just another option for adding your planning in there. Does anyone have any questions about those processes? Mel, do you mind if I add a quick comment, please? please. Yeah, so what Mel was just talking about then is the new reports in Opterra um, will come online in, in early January. We're actually just um, installing new hardware um, in the data center to be able to deal with the production load of all of that. But the big thing that people have been asking about is in the new report engine, um, you can when you run a report, you can choose to export it into PDF like you traditionally would, but most will actually um, send it straight out as a Word document or an Excel document, I guess, depending on the report. But for the farm plan, the, the obviously the idea of making it a word report is that you can then put a cover page on it. You can add any other content that you might want to anywhere in the document, and then just save it as a word doc or or, or put it as a PDF. Thanks, Mel. No worries.
any any questions about any of that? Anything that you are hoping to be able to do, or um, anything that was clear? If you're not familiar with uh, the actual use of Advisor, if it's not something you've been using in the past, um, and you're just on a trial for Optera or looking into it or something like that, we can absolutely run you through all of those processes as well. Um, we're always available on the help desk to book in a one-on-one -on -one training session if anyone needs one of those. So just send us an email at support at backpaddock.com.au or give us a call on the help desk and we can sort that out. Um, or if you're looking for more specific training within Optera, we can also answer your questions at any time if you give us a call. But if there aren't any further comments or questions, uh, just remember to unmute yourself by clicking your microphone icon if you did want to ask something. I think other than that, Mel, um, we're intentionally keeping these things really short and sharp. Mm -hmm. So if there's anything you've seen there or uh, whatever that you want to um, follow up on, yeah, as Mel said, just, just give us a hoi. So I guess just to round out on all of that, any content um, that you create in an existing farm plan back in history will obviously be already available on Optera. Yeah. Um, it's really just this basis of using Paddock Advisor just to do that first round of initial lifting and as you can see there, just to get the plans over into Optera where it's very easy to edit them, but initially as um, we continue the template structures and so on, um, much quicker to uh, just start the season in Paddock Advisor and then move across. Alrighty, thanks guys. Thank you. Thanks Chris. Thanks for coming everyone.